<laughs> Hello guys, how we doing? Welcome back to the free Amazon. Whoa, what a result that was. Top of the league. Ram and Earl off. Oh mate, that was so good last night and I finally get to do this review. It's such a busy light, night last night. It was really busy. Obviously, my daughter was asleep by the full time, so I couldn't come in here being really, really loud. Then I had to get up this morning, take a dentist and do loads of that stuff. So finally, now I get a chance to do the review and I'm still buzzing, thankfully, off that result. And that performance, honestly, guys, this team's a proper, proper team. And when I've had my mates, you know, and were Arsenal fans, Liverpool fans, I texted me after the game saying, mate, that's a proper result. That's a proper team. Like Mickey Agu was he, Benny, uh, Ben Rami. You know, these are opposition fans texting me saying, you know, they're admiring and actually enjoy watching West Ham play. Um, no changes to our lineup. Exactly the same as what started against Newcastle. Um, Leicester obviously didn't have much. Uh, the, some defenders. Uh, Evans was out. Vestergaard was out. So Arm T was still playing there. Um... We started really well, like we contained, like at times you, you, in the past you may have thought, oh he's sitting deep, he's not doing anything, but this was planned, this was a plan, you know, there was a point that a commentator said that I would love to see how many touches the Leicester centre-backs have had because it must be a record for a first half, because we just sat and sat, and then when it got to a point, we put the press on, and it was so well done, like if you could do that every game, you Listen, you're in the top, top teams then, if you could do it. Which West Ham, and that's the problem between a top team like Liverpool and Manchester City, for example, is that consistency. If we can get that consistency level of performance, I'm telling you what, there's not a lot of teams that are going to deal with it. But anyway, back to that pressing. At any point, it got near like Madison or anyone like that. It was like, boom, straight in, twos and threes, hunting impact. Fornells was an absolute nuisance last night. Like, I bet to play against him, the Leicester players were getting so wound up because he was just there on the, like on their heels, like digging little tackles in and little, little naughty ones. And then Rice was, you know, running the play really, really well. It's just, just a fantastic first half was amazing in terms of containing play and that transitional play. Like as soon as we got the ball, the counter attack, boom! Um, the first one sort of came from Antonio, didn't it? he? Turned in the middle ran towards the goal and then just blazed one wide. That was really unlucky. Real sort of sign of what sort of performance we was going to get out of Antonio. Um, after that, there was a couple of headers. I know Dawson could have had bloody three or four in the game. You know, he had a few headers in the game. Um, and then there was Sochek had one as well. And then the goal did come. Um, Pablo Fornells, listen, we've all been saying it, all the channels, this guy is so underrated and he's starting to show how good this guy is now. Uh, Rice picked up the ball, he laid it into his feet, he let it come across his body for now, and he ran forward, he laid the ball lovely into Ben Rama's feet, Ben Rama cut, it, cut in, lovely ball, and it just bounced in front of him, and then that left foot finish, past Schmeichel, great goal, lovely, lovely build up play, great to see Ben Rama get the assist as well, and even better to see for now, is not sky one over and put it in. And I think he's got a few goals in as well. When we talk about goals, you know, all over the pitch, and I'll do my keep believing video later. Listen, he's going to be a big part this season for now. He really, really is. He looked so, so good yesterday. And and there was a ball that he put in for now in the second half to Antonio that was so good. It was like Iniesta esque the way he just caressed it in. Um, apart from that. Um, we should have been like two or three. Like I say, Dawson had a couple of vetters, Sochi had a couple a uh, couple of vetters. Um we, we could have been like two or three up at half time, but it was only one nil. Um but we was good for it, you know, we, we was good for it. What did happen in the game though, just before the obviously half time, one of the key points in the game that happened was obviously Iosi Perez is sending off. Um you know, there are question marks. Was he fouled in the build-up to him fouling for now? He definitely got a little little push or maybe a little clip. But it, in the letter of the law today, that, it was the stamp, you know. Again, everything looks worse in slow motion. But I think as soon as there's a stamp, he, he has to go. He has to go. He has to go. He could have broke for now's leg. You know, very lucky that he didn't break his leg, to be honest with you. Um... And, you know, yeah, he may have been stepping over the ball, you know, to shield it like that, as Gary Neville and Carragher were pointing out, if you guys did see that half-time analysis. But it, that little bit, it's where the boot was that way, that went into the ankle, he had to go. And right decision for me. And then there was down to 10 minutes at half-time. Um, no changes. Um, but, again, we started 
just attacking. Every time we got the ball in the attacking areas, we, we looked so good, so, so threatening. All the time, we just looked a constant, constant threat. Um, the second goal did come. Um, it was a mix-up at the back uh, with Leicester. So Nchu played it into... Um, was it Schme Schmeichel played it? Yeah, Suenchu Su played it back to Schmeichel, not knowing that Antonio was closing down. Antonio picked the ball up, stood Schmeichel up. You know, he could have easily had a shot. Kept his composure, laid it into the feet of Ben Rama for a lovely finish. Um, so happy, you know. Go on assist again for Ben Rama. Um, and yeah, took it lovely. 2 new up, cruising at that point. Um, and we just, again, we kept really going close. Antonio forced a really good save with a header. Um, but then we, we had a tiny little nervy spell. Again, it was against the runner play. Uh, the ball, ball come down. I think it was Harvey Barnes and then did he release Vardy? Vardy whipped one in. Um, the ball was initially blocked. Tillerman's initial shot was blocked. Then it sort of come back at him, hit him here. Uh, it wasn't a handball. Uh, and then he was able to put it in. And at 2 1, we just a little bit of nerve, especially when like players that have been linked to West Ham had come on, like Patterson, Dacker, and people like that. I just started a little bit of a nerves, but we get our composure back. We was passing very well again. Options on the wing was always there, you know, we was, whether it was Fornells picking it up in the middle or Antonio picking it up in the middle. <coughs> it was always there, Ben Rama and Bowen for the release. Soufal was an animal the whole game, you know, up and down that right-hand side. Um, you know, dealt with Barnes really, really well the whole game. Cresswell was putting great balls in. Uh, Rice was driving from midfield. 10 out of 10s all over the pitch. And then the best thing happened, guys. The... He broke the record. Listen, Paolo Di Canio is my favourite player ever. Um, it would take someone very, very special to ever beat that. And Antonio Antonio doesn't beat Paolo for me in terms of legacy and my love for him. But um, that goal was a blinder. It really, really was. That first goal and the second goal. Uh, so, yeah, uh, the ball was played out to Declan Rice. Declan Rice whips a real low ball in. Still loads to do. Antonio backing into his man, backing into his man. Just shuffles slightly one way, turns inside, and then with that right foot, boom, straight past Antonio, and there was the record. And one of the best celebrations you'll see when he goes and picks up his uh, the cardboard of himself, lift him up like dirty dancing. Um, so happy for him, so so happy for him. What a guy! He's interview afterwards, so happy, you know, always like modest but funny with it as well you know sad about to get 20 goals and west ham win the league and stuff like that, that that's that's you know they're, they're the footballers you miss so you miss those interviews like the gaza days and when footballers were allowed a bit of personality and that's what seems what's good about the club at the moment you've got people like declan rice you've got people like antonio probably mark's a big part of that as well um you know they've got personality and they say, there's a bit of banter and there's camaraderie around the club and you know, that's showing on the pitch that they love each other. All, all these players love each other. Um, anyway, the next goal came. I can't remember who played the ball over. I can't remember. I think it might have been Bowen. might have been Fonnells. The ball was clipped over. Um, Antonio got this beautiful touch on the ball. Just touched it over uh, the player that was coming. And then was able to just get his stud on it and put it past um, Schmeichel. What a goal. What a goal uh, for 4-1. Absolutely cruising at that point, you know. It could have been sixes and sevens. Um, we were just so, so good on the night. Uh, and, you know, to beat a team like Leicester is a real statement. It really, really is. Because, as much as, you know, I was digging them out on Twitter during the game, but I, people will say it, you know, my mate Sam said it, you know. I wax lyrical about Leicester, do you know what I mean? Like, they are a top, top football team. I respect their manager, I respect the way they play. Um, and, you know, they're the sort of team that, as a West Ham fan, I aspire us to be that good and to be that, you know, be proud of a team like those Leicester fans must be. And to go out and do that to them, you know, really contain them and then go and score four goals against them. This is a team, you know, that beat City um, and had started the season really, really well. They had a really good pre-season. They started last, uh, ended last season fairly well as well. You know, to go and do that to Leicester is a top, 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 top result. It really, really is. Like, it's... That's a real, you know, statement victory that was last night. Um, yeah, so 4-2 against the Geordies. 4-1 last night. Listen, what more could you want? Honestly, what more could you want? You know, top of the league. I know it's only two games in and we're not going to stay there. But it just... Going forward now, 
there needs to be some depth there. There does, because that starting eleven, anyone on their day, barring like maybe the Liverpool, Man City's, maybe Chelsea in there now as well, on their day, that eleven is capable of beating anyone if they play at that level. You know, that front four is just ruthless, just movement and passing, technical ability. They all like a shot. They're all capable of scoring a goal. Hopefully, Bowen gets one soon. Um, it's exciting, guys. Honestly, really, really exciting. Uh, six points now. A joke, but, you know, 34 points to go. And then we're safe. If we can get safe by January, February, and we're still in Europe, who knows? You know, it's one of them. You can start hoping and believing for good things. You know, Crystal Palace coming up Saturday. I'll do my preview for that probably tomorrow. Do a little call-in, get you guys involved. Um, but, yeah, I'm absolutely buzzing. Absolutely buzzing. Um, that was a real... Proud to be for I can't stop smiling. I can't stop smiling. I'm just so happy and so proud of them boys out there. Ten out of tens all over. Honestly, you know, we had fears about Craig Dawson in the game. We thought the Vardy and Barnes would destroy him. He was immense last night. Absolutely immense. And how many headers did Sochek win in midfield? Crucial headers in midfield that were just breaking up that play at key times. Um yeah, just brilliant. Honestly, brilliant, guys. Hit the like button if you're new around here. Hit the subscribe button as well. Thank you so, so much, guys. Sorry the review is a little bit late. Obviously, like I say, I was a bit busy last night and this morning, so I finally got time to do it. Um, yeah, I'll be back with Keep Believing. Um, maybe later, maybe tomorrow. Uh, and then we've got, obviously, the Palace review. Uh, sorry, Paris preview. Uh, and we'll probably do a little call-in. I'm just looking in there. Yeah, I'll do a call-in on Thursday. Friday, we've got the Europa League draw. Then we've got the game. We've got loads coming up. And then, obviously, we have that little break of international break. But, yeah, listen, guys, suck it in. Enjoy it. Let's hope we can carry on this form to the Palace game. Until next time, come on, you Lions. Keep believing. Let's go.